Hi, for this recording, we are given vector v1, which is 1, 2, 0, and v2, which is 0, 3, 1. And also a space w. In part A, we show that this w is spanned by the set consisting of v1 and v2. Now, we are going to answer part B. Find an orthogonal basis for the subspace w that contains v1. For this, we need to refer to David Lay's linear algebra and its application, section 6.4, page 420, TLM 11, the Grand Smith process. Suppose that you want a basis x1 to xp for a subspace w. Now we can define v1 equal to x1, v2 equal to x2 minus x2 dot v1 over v1 dot v1 times v1 and so on for v3 and up to vp then we are going to get an orthogonal basis for w and the span of x1 to xp is the same as the span of v1 to vp now so this is how we do this question let w1 equal to v1 which is 1 2 0 and the v2 equal to 0, 3, 1. We are going to construct w2 now. This w2 will be called v2 minus v2 dot w1 over w1 dot w1 times v1. Now in this case, v2 is 0, 3, 1. How about v2 dot w1? Now v2 is 0, 3, 1. w1 is 1, 2, 0. So as we do the dot product, we know 0 times 1 is 0 and 3 times 2 is 6 and 1 times 0 is 0 and so in this case we will find that this answer is equal to 0 plus 6 plus 0 equal to 6 after we do the dot product okay so that is why the numerator is equal to 6 how about w1 dot w1 now the answer is equal to 5 this is because as you do 1 and 1 you get 1 and then 2 and 2 you get 4 and then 0 and 0 you get 0 all together then you get 1 plus 4 plus 0 which is 5 okay so let me highlight again so that you know where this number comes from so that is why the denominator is 5. So after the subtraction of these two vectors, I get minus 6 over 5, 3 over 5, and 1. Pull out a factor of 1 over 5, I get minus 6, 3, 5. So I have two vectors, w1 and w2 now. This set of vector will be orthogonal, and so they will form an orthogonal basis for w. You can check easily that the top product between them is zero. Now why this is true? This is actually based on David Lay's text, page 402, section 6.2. It says that any vector y can be written as a sum of two vector y cap and z, where y cap is parallel to a vector u and z is perpendicular to vector u. And y cap is called the orthogonal projection of y onto u, which is equal to y dot u over u dot u times u. And z is called the component of y orthogonal to u, which is y minus y cap. In our case, the w1, which is equal to v1, now we have v2. Now what we are going to construct is try to figure out a w2 now. So w2 will be perpendicular to w1. So this is our w2. And W2, we can find that this is actually V2 
minus this vector, let's call it OA. OA in this case is in the direction of W1. So the unit vector of W1 is W1 over the length of W1. And then what about the length of OA? The length of OA you can find that let's say that this angle is theta here. The length of OA is just the length of V2 multiplied by cosine theta, where the theta is the angle between V2 and V1. I'm going to multiply by the length of W1 and then divide the length of W1. So when I do that, something magical will happen because the, the expression on the top, the length of W1, the length of V2 cosine theta is precisely W1 dot V2 and the length, when you multiply the denominator, is precisely W1 dot W1 because the angle between W1 and W1 is zero. This is how you get OA. So the moment you get OA, then W2 we can find is just V2 minus OA since OA plus W2 is equal to V2 and this is why we get V2 minus W1 dot V2 over W1 dot W1 times W1 this is why the grand smith process work because of this okay that is the end of the recording